Hey everybody, my name is Amanda, and lately I've been watching a lot of videos where my favorite booktubers are making lists on their favorite like genres like urban fantasy, and paranormal, like mystery, thriller, YA, just their list of favorite books in these genres, and I figured why not make my own. And since urban fantasy is one of my favorite genres ever, I'm just going to go ahead and start with that. Now this list was a lot longer. I had urban fantasy mixed with some paranormal romance, but it got way too long, so I decided to split it up. And so if you want to see the paranormal romance one, it's going to be another video. So subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified when it comes out. The line between urban fantasy and paranormal gets mixed a lot. It's kind of hard to tell which one is which usually. I think, I'm pretty sure most of these fall within urban fantasy. Also these books are all going to be series. I think the smallest series has two to three books, but there's going to be more coming out later. The first series is the Elemental Assassin series by Jennifer Estep. The first book in the series is called Spider's Bite, and this series follows around the main character, Jim Blanco. She is uh, an assassin. Not only is she an assassin, she's an elemental assassin, which means she can control some elements. Her two elements are ice and earth. Now she's the only one in this world who can control more than one element, which comes into play later on in the series. So this world that she lives in, there are other elementals like her, and there's dwarves and giants and vampires and I think that's it. Is that it? I think that's it. Well anyways, she becomes an assassin after like her family is killed and through the series she like learns what happened to them and she takes revenge. There is romance in this, but I can't really talk about it that much without spoiling everybody, which okay, but okay. So if you don't like the main romance guy if you don't like the main romance guy in the first book just wait till the second one just read the second one it gets better the first one's really good but like romance wise it's meh the second book is and the third one woo, is way better on like the romance scale the first book starts around a series of events where her adopted father gets murdered and he was an assassin too he trained her so she goes on this mission to find out who killed him and to take his revenge. And the thing I love most about this series is that Jen is unapologetically herself. Jen is an assassin and a lot of people see that as a bad thing in this book. And part of her struggle is like finding like a family who doesn't judge her for what she does. She actually retires around the end of the first or second book, but she always gets into more trouble obviously but the thing is she doesn't apologize for being an assassin she does what she thinks she has to do and most of the time she's right the city she lives in is really corrupt and sometimes the only way to solve problems is to you know mm. so she's, she's not really a bad assassin I mean she has like her family has rules like no innocence and no uh, children and no like animals which, I mean, she's like, she's an honorable assassin, if there's such a thing. Anyways, highly, highly recommend the book. I think there's like, I want to say about like a dozen or so of the books. I have not read all of them. Oh, I'm like on book eight. I kind of finished the current book that they had out and like moved on and forgot that it existed. And then when I was making this list, I was like, oh my god, there's like four or five new books. I'm like... I'm down. The next book is one that everybody's heard of in the urban fantasy world, Kate Daniels. And I can tell you this, it is not overrated. It is amazing. Kate Daniels is just so freaking awesome. Ilona Andrews, they're a husband and wife writing team. Their world building just blows my mind. It's so cool. Kate Daniels takes place in like a post-apocalyptic Atlanta, Georgia place in their world magic controls everything for a while and then like it crashes and then technology comes back up and then technology goes down and magic comes up and it's a cycle it's really interesting to see how they've melded technology and magic in this world the way they wrote this series and they described everything is just fantastic and it totally puts you in it it's not like too descriptive where it's like 
two pages describing a building or anything, but it's like super to the point, you get it, it's in your head, you can picture exactly what they want you to picture, and you're just in there all the time. There is romance in the series as well. It kind of like a slow burn, picks up around the fourth or fifth book, I want to say. Their first book, Magic Bites, her, her adoptive father gets killed. What's up with all the adoptive fathers getting killed? It's like a reverse Disney. They have all the mothers dying, all the fathers die, but they don't want, this is like Bambi, they get murdered, jeez. This world has werewolves and vampires and warlocks and witches and all the things. Oh, it has um, gods and goddesses from like different mythologies and stuff. It's really interesting. And there's a few other of their books on this list. Anything they write, automatic buy. The next series is the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs. The first book is called Moon Called and it follows Mercy Thompson. She turns into a coyote. A lot of people really, really, really love this series. And it's not bad, I don't think it's bad at all. But it's just not really my style. I read the first book and I was like, okay. It's really interesting how they wrote the pack dynamics and there's a lot of Native American culture written into it, which I think is awesome. But I don't know, at the end of the first book there was kind of like a love triangle thing starting to develop and I'm like 100% against love triangles. I kind of hate the trope, you know? But I mean, a lot of people really, really, really love this book and I can't fault them from it. It's pretty good. It's just, I don't know, it didn't hold my interest, which is nothing against the book or the author. I mean, these are just my opinions. Go read the first book and if you love it, go read the second one. If you don't, then there's other books on this list. Hey. The next series is another I Love No Andrew series. Every single book they've written, I've read and I've loved. Never gonna change. Hopefully, hopefully never changes. But uh, this series is called the Hidden Legacy series. I think this is my favorite series from them. The first book is called Burn For Me. Not so great on the titles, I'm sorry. So again, the world building in the series, I Love No Andrews, they just kill it every single time. People in this world are humans, but they have magical talents and there's like a level of how strong you are. There's like notable and significant and the highest one is a prime. If you have two primes in your family you you form a house and y'all are just chilling out there with your family and then all of a sudden another house like attacks you and you have to fight back to the death and it's 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 it's, it's really interesting. Also side note this book takes place in Houston Texas my hometown what's up this book follows Nevada Baylor and she is a truth seeker she can tell when people are uh, telling lies and she can actually force you to answer her questions and tell the truth so she meets a telekinetic guy named Connor they go on like adventures trying to find this guy who's trying to burn down Houston and her whole family has like magic abilities and it's extremely interesting and I have read the trilogy about, I don't know, a billion times. There is a novella coming out pretty soon. I cannot wait. So the next book is the Demonica series by Larissa Ione. The first book in the Demonica series is called Pleasure Unbound. I think that's the worst name in this. So this series has to do with, uh, I guess, like Christian Bible stuff. There's demons and angels. And I guess this one could be more paranormal romance -y because it does focus more on the romance as opposed to the other series because they could draw out the romance. In the previous series that I mentioned, they had a, a main couple. That couple was the main couple for the entire series. In this series, each book has its own two people that they put together for each one. Each of these books has like its own beginning and end contained within a book, but then they have a larger overarching plot throughout the entire series. In the first book, they follow Taylor and Evelyn. She is a demon hunter. He is a demon. You see where this goes? It's a pretty good series. Uh, I think I've read all the current books. There's a, a few spin-off series like The Lord of Deliverance which focuses on the Four Horsemen which is pretty good. If you like series like that where it's like a lot of characters and everyone gets their own like little plot then read this. I go back and reread a few of the books every once in a while. I really like it. The next book got me into urban fantasy, paranormal romance as a whole. Okay, no, that's a lie. The first book that got me into paranormal romance was Twilight. We're not going to talk about that. What got me into like urban fantasy is The Night Huntress 
by Janine Frost. I read these books when I was like 11, 12 possibly. Maybe I was like 13, 14. Either way, I should not have been reading these books. This series was my like holy grail. It's what I compared every other series to. It's just so perfect for me because it focuses a lot on the romance, which I really love romance. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I love romance. Okay, let me explain the plot. God, caught up in the romance. I don't know what you're doing. The first book is called One Foot in the Grave and it follows Cat and Bones and Cat is half vampire, half human, but her mother has raised her into hating vampires. So when she grew up, she started like hunting them down and killing them because she hated them so much because her mother raised her like that. So when Bones, this like 100% vampire, British, sexy, kind of like a mix between Spike and Angel. Everyone says he's more Spike, but I just picture David Boreanaz. Anyways, so he's full vampire and he, he comes in and they have a little tussle, but then he wins the fight. And so they end up becoming partners and working together. So Kat is really, really strong and she knows how to fight. Oh yeah, Bones teaches her how to fight a little bit. And they, they go and hunt down this vampire who's like killing all these humans. So during the course of the series, there are two spin-off books and a spin-off series. Those two spin-off books are called First Drop of Crimson, which follows Spade and Kira, Bones and Kat's two best friends. The second spin-off book, also not the best title, called Eternal Kiss of Darkness, ooh, follows Moncrius and his love interest, Kira. Then the spin-off book called The Night Prince series follows Vlad, yes that Vlad, and his love interest, Leela, and it's a uh, four book series. Fantastic, loved it. And there is another spin-off series coming out so soon, end of October, it is Ian's book. Ian is one of Bones' other best friends. He's getting his own series. All the good books are coming out and I'm so excited. Next series is called the Chicagoland Vampire Series by Chloe Neal, I think. Chloe Neal, booyah. Their first book is called Some Girls Bite. The two main characters are Merritt and Ethan and they are the same couple for throughout the entire series. In this world there are a whole bunch of different creatures like all the supernatural creatures you can think of but they focus mostly on vampires because that's what they both are vampires. Ethan is head of his own house, uh, a house of vampires and he's like head honcho vampire which is cool I guess. So Merritt comes into the story she was attacked and so Ethan changed her into a vampire to save her and she kind of was like, I didn't ask for this. This is not completely romance driven, but it is there a lot, which I really like because I really like romance. And in this series, Merritt tries to help Ethan find his like humanity because he's been like a vampire forever. So that's one of the plot arcs in the series. And there's a lot more and they like fight bad guys, and bad vampires and like expose the world to supernatural creatures and I read about four or five books in this series. I think there's a lot more. I think at least maybe double that. But it's somewhere around fourth or fifth book something happens. If you don't want spoilers just so around the fourth or fifth book Ethan gets killed and you know you know they're not just gonna leave him dead because duh and like kind of got bored so I left yeah but read it and if you like it go for it so the next series is the pride series by Shelley Laurenstein one of my personal favorite series but I think it leans more towards paranormal romance than urban fantasy but it is a secret world like underneath regular society so I'm gonna count it as urban fantasy because I can because I made this list because I'm a boss here so this is another series where each book has its own couple pairing. And the main thing in this book is that there are shapeshifters like werewolves and like were cats and were bears and were things like other, I don't know. So the first book is called The Main Event. 
and it follows Dez and Mace. And Mace is a shapeshifter. He turns into a lion. And Dez, she's human, she's a cop, and she has no idea about shapeshifters or anything. So she dives into this world and like figures out everything. And Shelly Lornstein is so funny. All her characters are so funny and quirky and a little weird. They're fun characters and the stories are fun. And each uh, book has its own little like mystery, I guess. And there's a spin-off series called Call of Crows that she wrote. That's the next series. It follows mostly uh, North mythology. So this is still in like the shapeshifter world. Like shapeshifters still exist. They just are not focused on in this series. In this series, like all the religious pantheons exist. There's like North mythology and you know, like Christian and Egyptian and Greek, all things. Um, so this focus is on North mythology and there's like clans. So each god or goddess has their own clan, like Odin's clan and like Thor's clan and Loki's clan or whatever. This is on Skull's clan, which I've actually never heard of Skull before. I'm not sure if she's actually a thing in North mythology or the author made it up for the sake of the series, but it's super interesting so I don't really care. Skold's clan is called, the, they're the crows, and they're a whole bunch of girls who are like pretty much, I guess they're like the Norse assassins, I guess. When humans do something to make the gods mad, they send like the crows to wipe them all out. So uh, they're called crows because they have uh, wings. One of Skold's gifts to them is wings and like talons, and they interact with other clans like the ravens and valkyries and owls. They're not owls, what are they? They're owls, but they're not called owls. Whatever. They like all interact with each other and they always kind of have like a little rivalry going on. And it's, again, these characters are so funny just like in her other series. So 100% you should go read it. You don't have to have read the other series to read this one, but Shapeshifters do come up a, like a little bit in the second and third books, just like a little bit, not enough where you wouldn't be able to figure it out yourself if you haven't read the other series. But I mean, I, I recommend reading both series, so I think they're really good and fun and just kind of like a lighthearted read with a little mystery and romance and uh, action and humor and it's just, it's just, it's a good time. So the next series is called the Guild Hunter series by, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna butcher your name. I'm not even gonna try. The author's name is, da -da. I don't know if I'm not good at editing to do that. The first book is called Angel's Blood and this series there are angels and vampires. I think those are the only two paranormal creatures and they're not like Christian angels. They like they don't they don't serve a god or anything. They just kind of I don't know exist. The main characters in the first book are Elena and Raphael and Elena is a guild hunter hence guild hunter series. She's like a kind of like a mercenary I guess. You don't know what a guild is. And Raphael is an angel and he hires her to help track down this other angel. So Raphael is like super powerful and he's just very unempathetic towards humans. The series follows Elena and Raphael most of the time, but like every other book there will be, they'll be focused on a different couple that are like still within Raphael's and Elena's friend group. So you still get some info on them as the series goes along, even if it's not their book. To be honest, I didn't read all the books in the series. I skipped a few in the middle just because I wanted to read this one character's book and it was like the seventh book and I don't want to read all the other ones. I've like read the first four and I skipped a few and I read that one and I like kind of went back. And it's pretty good. It's not like the best series in the world by any means, but I can't even say it's a lighthearted series because it's not. There's kind of some messed up stuff that happens. But it's really interesting, uh, the like the angel politics and like, the vampire and human and like angel like rivalry, I guess. P definitely pick up like the first couple books and if you like it, then keep on reading. But if you don't, meh, whatever. The next series is the other series by Ann Bishop, and the first book in this series is called Written in Red, and this is also another very interesting world. So in this one. There are shapeshifters and elementals and I don't think there's vampires, uh, but there's, I don't know, a whole bunch of like magical creatures and like, and the, all these creatures are known to the human world. 
So this is like an alternate reality where like supernatural creatures own all the land on earth and so humans rent the land from these like supernatural creatures but there's like a weird tension and like the creatures can kill the humans anytime they want and often they do because I don't know they don't like humans. The two main characters in this series are Meg and Simon and Meg is a I forget what it's called. She can see like prophecies and stuff, but only after she's like cut her skin. So once she cuts her skin, she like sees like visions and stuff and she can tell a future. So she has been held captive since for like her entire life. And so she runs away and then she runs into this courtyard and a courtyard in the middle of the city and it's owned by the supernatural creatures and humans can come in, but if they come in and someone kills you, then it shouldn't have come in you know so she runs there for a safe passage and she meets a guy named Simon who is the like the alpha and he runs the courtyard and he is a werewolf the series is just about how Meg interacts with all the supernatural creatures and he learns about why they like held her captive and like the other girls they have captive and they try to they, they rescue them and there's like mysteries and stuff and this is a super slow burn romance. I kind of even can't call it romance because I think there's four or five books. I have not read them all. I think I've read through book three. I just really like romance and there wasn't enough in it for me so I kind of just stopped. Which is nothing against the book. It's a really good book but I just I like having more romance with my stories just because I know I like romance. So since she's been held captive since like forever she's not really emotionally developed enough to have like that kind of relationship and Simon is a werewolf and in this world they pretty much view humans as like meat and every once in a while they do eat humans so it's like a weird dynamic so it's not like a conducive to a healthy relationship I'm not sure it's, again just not enough relationship stuff for me it's a really interesting world and if you like more urban fantasy without too much romance this would be perfect for you. Pretty much every other series on this list is like romance this and romance that because it's me. I'm sorry. The last series on this list is called The Broken Destiny series by Janine Frost. She's the one who wrote Night Huntress, aka one of my favorite authors ever. The first book is called Beautiful Ashes and this is a trilogy I think and it follows Ivy and Adrian. In this world there is regular reality I guess and then like a secret like it's like hell pretty much it's where the demons all hide the demon world is like a reflection of the human world think like the upside down in stranger things where it has like all the same buildings and stuff they just demons live there and it's always like dark and there's no sun and so because there's no sun there's no like vegetation there's no cattle or whatever so he, the cattle are humans it's a little graphic and that stuff like eats you out just avoid this book it's, it's not like prevalent but it's like it's described it is described but anyways that's not the plot of the story duh so ivy's sister gets kidnapped and taken to this other place so ivy goes and searches for her and she runs into this guy adrian and adrian was actually raised in the other place adrian was sent to find ivy by somebody i forget who once he rescues her from some demons that are trying to kill her, they it finds out that they're like bloodlines, like they're like descendants, like our mortal enemies or whatever. So they like are reluctant to work together because it's like predestined that they're gonna kill each other or like be each other's demise. But she's gonna go find her sister no matter what and he's not gonna let her die just because she wants to go find a sister. So they help each other and they travel through this like upside down place and avoid being eaten. I've read the first two books. I, the third one has come out. I have not read it yet. It came out like a few months ago, I think. So I have to get on that. Totally check out the series. It's, I think it's really good. I just need to read the third one, see how it ends. So that is the end of the list. If you want more urban fantasy recommendations, if you go on Goodreads, there is like a list called like awesome women in urban fantasy where it's like the female protagonist is like really 
kick butt like Kate Daniels, the Elemental Assassin books and Night Hunters and like Mercy Thompson where the females are kind of really strong and like empowered I guess and but it's in all urban fantasy and I'll put like I guess I, if I can scroll right here, if I'm that good at editing. The list on Goodreads, they have a whole bunch of other books. You can just pretty much work your way down the list. There are a lot of books on there that I have not listed in this list, which are sure fantastic. A lot of people say a lot of great things about them, and I have to get on that. Also, if you have any recommendations about urban fantasy series or paranormal romance series, please, please, please leave them in the comments. I so need some more urban fantasy books to read. I'm gonna go through that Goodreads list and start some of those series. If you have any like recommendations that like aren't on the list or you think I really 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 should read, please let me know. I will read all the comments. But again, like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm gonna make a paranormal romance list. I think it may be like a sports romance. Mostly romance. Okay, if you subscribe to this channel, know that I love romance. I'm not ashamed about it. It makes me happy. All my lists, pretty much, will be about romance. Maybe. I might even have a list that's like all my favorite non-romance books. I don't think I have that many. I don't think I have that many non-romance books to be able to make a list about it. Anyways, my favorite, like, I'm gonna make lists about my sports romance, like LGBT romance, all the romance. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of lists. Maybe some other videos about other things hopefully if you have any like video suggestions please 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 comment down below i would love to get into this whole youtube thing more yeah that's my video goodbye okay,